31. What is the major product of the reaction shown below? So here we have the alkoxy mercuration demercuration reaction. This reaction doesn't have, for the most part, carbocation rearrangements, but it does proceed with Markov Nikov regional chemistry. Now, if this was water instead of ethanol, we would get an OH on the secondary carbon. Instead, we're going to get an ether, OCH2CH3. So the end result for this reaction is going to be this product. The double bond will go away and we'll get this product here. So we're going to get an ether with Markov Nikov regio chemistry. Now here's one way you could show the mechanism. So here is mercury acetate. The double bond is going to attack the mercury and kick out one of the acetate groups. Now we're going to add the mercury on the primary carbon. So we get a, a secondary carbocation, which does not want to rearrange. The reason being is we can draw a resonance structure where this lone pair could connect with the carbocation, giving us a more stable mercurinium intermediate. So this is the mercurinium ion. Now the mercury bears the positive charge as opposed to the carbon. And so that's why we don't really see much carbocation rearrangement with this reaction. More than 90% of the yield will be this product. Not to say that it can't rearrange. Any rearranged product will be a minor product. It won't be the major product. Now, the true hybrid is somewhere between these two resonance forms. Notice here, the carbon has a positive charge. Here it does not. So for the resonance hybrid, this carbon is going to have considerable partial positive charge. So the nucleophile, which is going to be ethanol in this case, it's going to be attracted to this carbon. There's going to be more partial positive charge on that carbon as opposed to this one. Now most nucleophiles, they like to go for the more accessible, less sterically hindered carbon. However, due to electrostatic attractions, this partially negative oxygen is going to go for the partially positive carbon. Opposites attract. So in this case, due to that electrostatic driving force, it's going to go for the more substituted carbon because it has more positive charge. When it does that, this bond is going to break, pushing those electrons back to the mercury atom. So we're going to have an oxygen with a hydrogen and an ethyl group. And over here we have HgOAC. Now the oxygen has a positive charge. So we need to do an acid-base proton transfer reaction. Keep in mind, one of the acetate ions was kicked out. And so we still have that. So that's going to act as a base. So that's our acetate ion, OAC minus. And this is going to abstract the proton. So right now, this is what we have. So now this is OCH2CH3. Now, to get to this product here, we need to move to the second step, sodium borohydride. Now, certain textbooks mention that there's evidence that this can be a radical reaction. So we're not really going to go over the mechanism for the second part. But what you need to know is that the mercury acetate 
is going to be replaced with a hydrogen atom. And sodium borohydride is going to be helpful with that. So that's the end result for this reaction. We're going to add an ether on the secondary carbon, and on the primary carbon, we get a hydrogen. Now, this is for those of you who might be interested in joining my YouTube membership program. If you type in Organic Chemistry Tutor in the YouTube search box and click here, it's going to take you to my channel. Now, if you scroll down, you could find my Organic Chemistry video playlist. And in this playlist, you could see all the videos that I have available to those in my membership program. So, for instance, if you look at this video, this is a basic introduction into organic chemistry. It's about 42 minutes long, but the full version is an hour and 42 minutes long. And that's accessible if you decide to join my membership program. But now you not only get that video, but you also get other videos as well. So like this video on valence bond theory, you get access to the full version, which is about 33 minutes long, compared to the free version, which is 10 minutes long. And you could see it here. I have another one, resonance structures, acids and bases, pKa values for acids, IUPAC nomenclature, Newman projections, chair confirmations with ring flips. Now this video is my organic chemistry exam one review. It's a quick review of the things that you'll typically be tested on in the first semester exam of organic chemistry. The free version is about 42 minutes long, the full version is two hours long. Now over here, this is an actual practice exam with multiple choice problems and free response questions. As you can see, the free version is only 42 minutes long. The full version combined is between seven to eight hours long. Now I have other videos on stereochemistry, specific rotation, SN2, SN1, E1, E2 reactions. I have a practice test on that because that's a topic that a lot of students struggle with. So the full practice test is about four hours long. Again, if you join the membership program, you'll get access to that video. I have videos on alkene reactions, alkyne reactions, and this is my organic chemistry one exam to review. Over here, this is the practice test with about 85 questions. As you can see, the full version is six hours long. The free version is about 43 minutes long. In my membership program, you'll get access to alcohol reactions, free radical reactions, and of course, my organic chemistry one final exam review video. The full version is about six hours long, but the, the first two hours are free. This is the last four hours. To find the first two hours that are free, here it is right here at the top of the list. So feel free to take a look at that if you want to know what you're getting if you decide to join my YouTube membership program.